the Algebra 1 students, it's Miss Moore. So I just wanted to check in with you since we aren't meeting for our live session and just make sure you know exactly what you're working on this week. So um, let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll go step by step through each day um, what you need to be working on. Okay, so we are in week 13. And so Monday is a factoring review. So the factoring review is in Canvas. So you need to log into Canvas and then scroll all the way down. You'll see unit nine, which is factoring. Go down, find week 13, and then you're gonna go ahead and this is in Canvas. So you're just going to um, review all the things, all the different type of factoring that you have learned so far this unit. And then you're going to go ahead and submit this 10 question assignment as soon as you're done. So you have all your notes on factoring out the greatest common factor. And then when A is one, when A is not one, and um, if there's two-step factoring. So that's for Monday. And then Tuesday is the Unit 9 application. So I'm gonna go ahead and help you get started on the Unit 9 application. Okay, so we have some word problems that we are going to be factoring to find the answer to them. So the directions are to solve the following word problems by applying the factoring skills you learned in unit eight, show your work. So the area of a pool is 5x minus 20. So it always helps to draw a picture. So we have a pool. We know that the area is 5x minus 20. So now we need to find the length and the width then find the perimeter. So now that we've drawn our, we've drawn our picture, it's really easy to um, factor to find. So remember when we have, uh, when we're factoring, we're looking for the common factor first. So five and X, we would want to expand, that's five times X. And then negative 20, that's negative one times four times five. And so we see, that there's a five in each box. So our width would be five. And then we have an X left in the first box and a negative one and four, which we multiply to negative four in the second box. So now here's our pool. The width is five and the length is X minus four. So the length is X minus four. The width is five. Now it says, then find the perimeter of the pool. So the perimeter, we have to add up all the sides. So this side is five, this side would be X minus four. So we need to combine our like terms once we add these up. So we have X minus four plus five plus X minus four plus five. So we can combine our X and this X, so we have two X's and then negative four plus five minus four plus five, which is two. So the perimeter of this pool is two X plus two. I'll go ahead and help you get started on number two. The area of Sam's garden is X squared minus six X plus eight. Find the length and the width of this garden. Then find the perimeter of Sam's garden. Okay, so similar to this problem, but now we have a trinomial. So we have X squared minus six X plus eight. So this is gonna be our four boxes. And our little box inside. And so we're gonna put our X squared here our negative six X here and our positive eight here. So you're going to go ahead and factor. So what multiplies to X squared and then what two numbers add to negative six and multiply to eight. Then once you have your length and your width, then you can find the perimeter. 
So you're gonna add and make sure to add up all four of your sides and then you can find the perimeter of Sam's garden. Okay, and then you'll go ahead and finish two through four of your application. And then on the back, there's gonna be some more application problems that go with number four. And then you're gonna be working on the unit nine problem solving task. So we have this layout of a backyard. There's a pool, a shed, a dog house, a play set and a garden. So the first thing is you're gonna fill out this table on page 88. So you're gonna factor the area of each item Factor the area of each item in the backyard to determine the length and the width and show your work. So our pool, we flip back. The pool is 20 X squared plus 23 X plus six. Okay, so what multiplies to 20x squared? It's just gonna be some guessing and checking. So since our other numbers aren't too big, rather than using 20 and one or 10 and two, I'm gonna start with 4x and 5x. Then we have to do a little guessing and checking. Need a pencil. So what multiplies to six? So it would be six and one or two and three. And it looks like it's probably gonna be positive since we have multiplies to a positive number and it adds to a positive number. So let's see if we have a four here and a five here, I'm thinking we probably wanna start with the smaller numbers. Let's try two and three. So four times three would give us 12x and five times two would give us 10x. So not quite, we're at 22x. So let's switch those, we're really close. What happens if we put the two here and the three here? Then four x times two is eight x three times five X is 15 X and 15 X and eight X give us that 23 X we need. So then we know the length and the width of our pool are four X plus three and five X plus two. Okay, and then we need to find the length and the width of the shed. So our shed is 16 X squared minus 25. So 16x squared minus 25. So we don't have an x term. So that means these actually add to in here, it would be a zero. So what multiplies to give us 16 X squared? Well, we know that these need to cancel out. So that means these are gonna be the same number too. So to 16, that would be four and four. And then X and X would give us our X squared. And then what opposites multiply to give us negative 25? Because they add to zero. So we know they have to be the same number, but different signs. So then it would be a positive five 
and a negative five, because then we would get positive 20 X here, negative five times four X would be negative 20 X. So see those cancel out. And then the negative five times five gives us our negative 25. So the length and the width of our shed would be four X minus five, and then four X plus five. Okay, so now you're gonna go ahead and factor to find the length and the width of the doghouse, the garden, and the playset. And then you're gonna use the information over here and answer the questions on page 89. So we could do number two together. If X is two, what is the actual area of the pool? So the area of the pool was 20, area equaled 20x squared plus 23x plus 6. I'm just copying down what they gave us for the area. So now they're telling us that x is 2. So we're going to plug in 2 for x. So 20 times 2 squared plus 23, but we know that X is two plus six. So make sure to do your parentheses and exponents first. So two squared is four, and then four times 20 is 80, plus 23 times two, which is 46, plus six. So 80 plus 46 would be 126, plus six would be 132. Okay, so then now you can use that to find the cost of a new pool cover. So if it's a if it's a dollar twenty five per square foot, including tax, how much would a new pool cover cost? So if the area is 132 um, square feet. Oh, this should be feet squared. So you'll just have to multiply that by a dollar twenty-five, and then that will give you the co the cost of the new pool cover. And then it looks like for number four, they're talking about putting a fence around the open sides of the pool and garden. So one length and width. So just the two open sides of the pool and the garden. So this side and this side, and then this side and this side, because these, this, there's already an outside fence along the entire outside. Okay, so then you're going to add up all the open sides to determine how much fencing she would need. So you're going to need that information from this page. So we already know the pool. We know the length and the width of the pool, but we haven't found the length and the width of the garden. So then you'll need the information from here from the garden. Then you'll add that up to calculate the perimeter. And then you'll solve for X using 66, because then it's going to tell you that the perimeter is 66. Then you'll determine X. And then for C, you'll calculate the cost. And then, so that's Wednesday. And then if we go back to Canvas, Thursday is in Canvas. It's your unit nine study guide. So you'll click here and complete the study guide for Thursday. And then Friday is also in Canvas. You will complete the unit nine test. Okay, so um, go ahead and work on your assignments. You're just applying what you've learned and getting ready for your test. If you um, need any help, um, feel free to contact me probably on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I won't get back to you, but Thursday or Friday, I will definitely get back to you if you need any help. Um, and I can also answer questions when we meet next week for our live session too. 
I hope you guys have a great week and I will see you next week.